several verses of scripture here. Going to begin reading with verse 1. Now the feast of uh, unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Now the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed as Carrot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and coveted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. They said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye uh, are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto uh, the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there to make ready. And they went and found as uh, he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. When the hour was come, he sat down uh, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth, and as uh, goeth as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And he gave, uh, and, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve for whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at meat but I am among you as he that serveth ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan 
hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail thee not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. I want to talk to you just a few minutes about today is the day that we set aside every fifth Sunday. We have set aside to take the Passover. Now I want you to understand something. There's no saving fire in this Passover right. or in this communion that we take today. But it represents a saving power. Now, I thought about Jesus here as uh, if, if you go and you read in the next chapter, you'll find I'm going to get rid of this coat for just a few minutes. I'll try not to hold you long. But you'll find in the next chapter where he went to Gethsemane, where he prayed there in the garden until his sweat became his great drops of blood. Now what the twelve didn't understand was he had already been betrayed. Judas had already went and he had already betrayed him and he had already set the stage and Jesus knew this. And he told them, the one that betrayed me is sitting here and his hands are on the table with me. You know, betrayal is something I, uh, I don't know about you, but I hate betrayal. I hate it when somebody uh, just... Uh, just betrays me, don't you? But Jesus looked at it a different way. He understood. And he said, say, woe unto the man that betrayed me. But he knew it was a vehicle that had to be used to get him to where he had to go. And that was to Calvary. Because that was the purpose that he came into this world for all along. Amen. And I can see him as he called them men together. And as he began to talk to them, he began to tell them, now you've been with me through all the sufferings, through all the temptations, through all the trials. You've been with me. You've seen what has been done. And I thought as she was uh, singing the song a while ago and she was talking about uh, uh, all the miracles that the Lord done. You know, uh, you think about the Jews hated him. And for what reason did they hate him? He did nothing but good for them. He went around teaching them. He went around preaching to them. And he went around healing their sick. Raising their dead. Everything that he done was for their good. But they hated him. And you know why? Because he went against what they had been taught. He pointed out their faults to them. You know, uh, on the way to church this morning, I was thinking about uh, how hard it is to get folks into church today and how it's hard to get them just to come to the house of God. And you know what I believe a lot of it is? They don't want to come to church because they don't want to get in a place where they'll be convicted Amen. of the way they live. <laughs> you know, it's easy for us to say I'm a child of God. It's easy to get up and, uh, you know, most people will get up and they'll testify and they'll say I love the Lord. It's another thing when your life has to reflect that. But Jesus, these 12 men had been with him through the hard times. I look at church today as uh, versus 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you couldn't hardly get in the house of God on Sunday morning. Amen. It was packed out. Every church you went to was full. Amen. People would come in, they had a mind to worship, and they had praised God. Amen. 
But I thought about 20 years ago, life wasn't as easy for some folks as it is now. I remember, and most of you, uh, when we was growing up, folks didn't, you know, they didn't have the money to go and just blow. What money they had, they had to use it to take care of their family. Uh, I, start, I, I got up this morning, I was fussing about these old shoes Susie he bought. <laughs> it's hard for me to get over and tie, bend over and tie shoes, and, but she bought me some tie. She said, well, you wanted some as comfortable. I said, yep, I wanted some I could put on too. So, you know, yeah. But we've got spoiled. Yep. We want what we want when we want it. It's been so easy for us. And uh, if we don't like something, let's throw it away and go get something else. It don't matter. We got plenty of money. God blessed us. And uh, if, uh, if we don't like this tie, just take it off and throw it in the garbage and go get another one. God has been good to us. Amen. This nation that we live in today, every one of us, if we would just stop and start to count our blessings, we ought to shout all over this Amen. house this morning because God has been good to us. Amen. Not one of us come to church hungry this morning Amen. if we did it because we chose to come that way. Now, I smell beans all the way to church this morning. But, I said all that to say this. We put so many things in front of what we ought to be doing, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Yep. And I'm going to tell you this, I don't know none of us that can take this communion this morning without doing a lot of soul searching before we do. We fail God in so many ways. Uh, hey, we ought to be ashamed to come and take this communion. When you think about what He did for us and what we've done for Him. Amen. We're so spoiled. But I thought about Jesus. As he called these men in. He said, I want you to go and I don't know if you noticed this or not when you read it, but he, he made it easy for them. He said, You'll find a man down there toting a water pitcher. Preacher, what made that easy? Because men didn't tote water pitchers in those days. The women were the ones that went and got the water and the ones that watered the animals and things like that. Men didn't tote water pitchers. So he made it easy. He made it a man that they could recognize and they would know by his actions. Now listen. They would know by what he was doing that he was the man that was going to set up the upper room. Okay? People know today by our actions what we're doing. <laughs> we may say one thing, but we can't fool folks. Right. People ain't crazy. They look at your and your actions and the way you live your life, the way you do things. They know where you're genuine or not. But Jesus told, chose two disciples. He said, I want y'all to go and prepare the sacrifice. know what that meant that meant they had to go find a lamb without spot and without blemish they had to take that lamb they had to kill it and they had to prepare it because see that lamb the entire lamb had to be eat there couldn't be none of it left I wonder, now listen to me. Preacher, where's the significance in eating the whole lamb? You either take Jesus with a, your whole heart or you don't take him at all. Amen. You can't, listen, you can't serve God half-heartedly. Right. You can't come to him half-heartedly. 
When you come to Him, you've got to commit all of it to Him. And if you don't commit it all to Him, you will never be where you need to be. Amen. So, He said, you prepare the land. He said, there's an upper chamber up there. I want you to go and set it up. And I can just imagine as these disciples went, now I want you to, here's where the rubber meets the road. Here's where he told them, and they wasn't listening. He told them, said, this is the last supper that I will eat with you. The next time we eat together, Ooh. Oh. The next time we eat for you, it'll be in a place that I've prepared for you, not one that you've prepared for me. This time you're preparing it for me. Next time I'm going to prepare it for you, and that ought to make you shout all over the house. I'm going. Listen, folks, I'm going to eat with y'all one more time, and then I'm leaving here because I'm going to finish the work I come here to get started. Now, once I get that finished, I'm going to the Father and I'm going to prepare a plate for you. Yes, and we're going to eat again in heaven one day. Oh, I'm telling you, when I think about that marriage supper of the Lamb, when we sit down around the throne of God, right there at that table that He prepared for us, and we eat together in the portal of glory. If that don't make you want to shout, you wouldn't win. Amen. 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 I think about my Lord. <laughs> you see, he knew what he, he, he foreknew all things. He knew that the next time they saw him, they wouldn't even recognize him. Because he'd be a man that was beaten beyond recognition. A man that they beat all night long. When he went to Gethsemane that next day and he was praying, Father, if it be you will, let this cup pass from me. That man, God the man, knew the pain that he was going to have to endure. He knew the suffering that he was going to have to go through. And that man didn't want to have to go do that suffering. Oh, but God the Son. Amen. Bless him, Lord. As he prayed there, yes, sir. I thought about what he told old Peter there. And I read you, he said, Peter, when, Peter, when you're converted, I want you to strengthen the brethren. You see, he knew that Peter was a miserable. Listen, uh, you hear me today. Old Peter wasn't nothing but a mean old fisherman, miserable, low down. When they come to Gethsemane to take the Lord, he got a sword to cut one of his ears off. He was a mean bugger. But then that night as they carried him from Pilate's hall, prepared to Pilate's hall, and they beat him and they spat on him and they smote him with reeds. And uh, one of them pointed Peter out and said, that's one of them. He said, no, I'm not. And even to, went to cur the point of cursing. And then when that old cock crowed, <laughs> oh, Peter, God, a Holy Ghost conviction, come on, old Peter. And he went out and he began to weep. I believe that night uh, uh, Peter was converted. That night Amen. Peter realized uh, uh, that he was the Lord of glory. Uh, uh, that he had yes. told him uh, uh, that, uh, uh, listen, Peter, i got to go through all this and you ain't going to be mad enough to stay with me. Uh, but when you're converted, uh, uh, you'll find a strength that you've never had before. Uh, Brother Peter Bless found you know. that strength. Uh, if you go on and study, you'll find Peter later uh, uh, was crucified upside down. Uh, uh, but Brother everywhere he went, uh, oh, Peter had power with God. Uh, uh, power so much uh, uh, that even his shadow passed over. I healed the sick. Let me tell you something about power with God. And you know why? Because old Peter's so loud to God. Oh, let me tell you something. And when we sell out to God, there's power that comes with it. Amen. 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 But I can 
see him. I got to hurry up here. I can see him as he took that cup. And he sealed that cup. <coughs> and he said, now listen, boys. After this, every time you gather together, every time you drink a, a sip of wine, you're going to remember me. <laughs> you're going to remember the time that we walked the shores of Galilee. You're going to remember the time that you heard me teach. You're going to remember the scripture that I used. It's going to be brought back to your memory. Oh! you saw me do. Oh, but he said, most of all, you're going to remember the price that I paid for you. Oh, listen, I can you I think about it this morning as you take this cup. I want you to remember, brother, your salvation was free, but it wasn't cheap. It cost my Lord his life. Amen. He said, as often as you drink this cup, Peter, you remember, because it's going to remind you of that blood that I shed for you. Amen. Oh, I believe as old Peter sat there as him and John looked at Christ hanging on that cross that day. And as that blood trickled down and stained that cross, oh, let me tell you something. Oh, they saw their Savior hanging there, and it broke their heart. Oh, they were men that loved him so much. But they were humans. And you remember. After Christ died and was resurrected, they were just sitting around there, and old Peter said, Well, I'm going fishing. to go back to that lifestyle that he lived before after Christ lived. Did you remember what happened? The Lord appeared there on the shore too. He said, have you called anything? He said, no, we told all that. We hadn't taught nothing. He said, we'll launch out to the deep. And when he said that, old Peter realized what it was. He said, oh, that's the Lord. And he, and he jumped, grabbed his coat, and jumped off in the water. And he began to swim toward the Lord. Remember what the Lord told him? He said, Peter, from this point on, you're going to be fishers of men. Amen. Peter, you ain't going back to that old lifestyle anymore. You need to get away from that. You need to forget that. You've got something to do. You've got a job to do. Listen, Satan every day wants you to go back to that old lifestyle. He wants you to get right back in the same old rut that you was in. But I'm telling you, you will never be happy there again. And Peter would have never been happy fishing. He didn't catch nothing. He had done forgot how to fish. He didn't know. He, he was even fishing in the wrong spot. He wasn't a fisherman no more. He was an apostle. And it was his job to go into the world and preach the gospel. Let me tell you something. I ain't a drunk no more. I'm a child of God. Either. Right. Amen. He told them, 
said that bread. <coughs> See the custom back in them days when they went into a house and they sat down to eat, the master of the house would break the bread. And when he broke the bread, then they'd pass it around and everybody would get some of the bread. He said, every time y'all go in and you break this bread, he said, I want you to remember that this was my body that was broken for you. He said, you're going to have to remember the price that was paid for you to appreciate the salvation Amen. that you have. Some of us so easily forget the price that was paid. Right. Amen. We forget sometimes the suffering, the agony. And you know what else we forget? We forget that he was the king of glory. He didn't have to come down. Amen. He could have sat right there and just destroyed us. But he chose to come to save us. And as we take this communion today, I'm going to give some time here in just a minute. These altars, They've been open ever since we come in here this morning. As far as I'm concerned, these altars are never closed. But I'm going to give you some time here in just a minute to come and to bow in this altar. And if you've got sin in your life or you've got something that's bothering you, something that's, uh, uh, that's keeping you from being what you ought to be, then you need to get up here take care of that. So I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a warning that goes with taking this communion unworthily. You say, well, preacher, you just said I couldn't be worthy. That's exactly what I said. And there's no way you can make yourself worthy. And that's what so many people today are trying to do. You cannot make yourself worthy. But he can. We're justified by his blood. The atonement that he gave for us is the only justification we have. I can't live right. You can't live right. But it's him that lives in us. And if you're trying it on your own, Susan hates that word yo, I use yo. If you're trying it on your own, you need to come today. And you need to get in this altar and you need once and all, once and for all, settle it with him. If you've got some sin in your life, well, preacher, I don't know. I might. You know. You know. If you failed him, you know. Preacher, how do you know I know? Because that precious Holy Ghost of God that dwells in you lets you know every time not just sometime, but every time that you fail him. Every time that you see him, he lets you know. And you know where you stand with him today. I want you to stand with me, Ken. I want you to play a song. We're going to do communion in just a minute. If you're not right with God and you've got things in your heart that you need to confess, maybe it's something you should have done, didn't do. You need to do this all and get it straight. <coughs> Heavenly Father, as we bow, in your divine presence today, these that